Bookworms Horror Podcast is sponsored by Creepy Crate. Creepy Crate is a horror and true crime subscription box filled with spooky collectibles, macabre accessories, and terrifying goodies. Each bi-monthly box is filled with over $85 of terror and includes at least one horror or true crime book. This box delivers dread to your doorstep for just $39.99 with free shipping. Go to creepycrate.store to subscribe. Use the code bookworm5 at checkout to get $5 off your subscription. That's bookworm5 for $5 off your subscription. And now to the show. Welcome to Bookworms Horror, the podcast that offers you tips on writing, especially in the horror genre. My name is James Zippolitti. I am the host of the Real Demons of Pop Culture podcast. And today I discuss setting reasonable goals for writing with Regina St. Clair. Regina is a Wadi Award winner for Best Horror Novel, as well as multiple screenwriting awards, including a Webby honoree. Regina is also the contributing editor of the best-selling Local Haunts, a horror tube anthology. Find Regina and her alter ego, Batilda, at her booktube channel, Regina's Haunted Library, and on her blog, rstclair.com. Regina and myself are the editors of the Bookworms Horror Zine, and since we're seeking great horror fiction for bookworms, we created this weekly podcast to offer writers quick tips on writing for the genre. Find all our links in the show notes. Now let's jump into my conversation with Regina as she speaks with me from her haunted library. So I wanted to talk about habits, and this is not necessarily for horror only. This is writing habits, period. And I think our listeners, if you want to succeed in writing, you have to have good habits. So Regina, I have some questions for you, and we'll see what you think about the habit. It's something that you struggle with, something you find easy. First one is setting reasonable goals. And what I mean by that is, do you write every day? And if you do... Do you have a amount of pages or word count that you try to reach? What are your goals when you sit down to write? Well, that is a very good question. And I would love to say that I do like <laughs> the same thing every day. I, I do it kind of in, maybe it's kind of like exercising. I'll go, I'll, I'll get into a program where I'm writing, like during COVID, I, I think I wrote, a, like, I think I maybe had, 12 books <laughs> that year. During COVID, I did write at least 2,000 words a day, and I kept, because I that's kind of all I was doing. So I would keep very meticulous uh, notes. I have a spreadsheet, and I, I do still use that spreadsheet. So I just haven't been on, on the daily routine like I have been, but I, I, do, I do something every day. So this morning, I worked on my new novel, which is called Carney, that should be out late August. And the first chapter, the prologue, is going to be included in the next Bookworms, which is coming out in June. So this morning I worked, I have an editor, like a proofreader, so I went over uh, his changes. And then I also uploaded three chapters to my Wattpad, one of my Wattpad stories. So even though I didn't write, I spent about an hour and a half, two hours working on my writing, which I do try to do every day. So if I can't write every day, I do something. And then I, I did a, uh, and this will be uploaded on my Patreon, my next Patreon vlog that I'm going to do. Maybe okay. I'll probably do it today. But um, I challenged myself just recently, I think it was last week, to see if I could write for six hours straight. I had a free day. Uh -huh. And my goal was to, try to finish this other Wattpad story that I'm working on. I didn't finish it, but I did. I didn't last six hours either. <laughs> I did five hours and I wrote over 6,000 words, which was pretty good. Like that's a lot for me in one day. So right. and, I try to challenge myself too. that, you know, I, I, I don't think I could do that every day, but it's, it's proof that it can be done. 
And I think that's where we're coming up with the idea of set reasonable goals. Because if you do say, oh, I'm going to be Regina and I'm going to try to write six hours straight every day, you'll end up quitting really fast. Yes, because, because I don't write six hours yeah, a day. That is not, she's just saying she's challenging herself, but you have to, this is a little Apple related only because of what I do. But a lot of times when people set up their Apple watches and I'm teaching them about Apple watch, they have this thing where it's the rings. So the rings on the Apple watch, you have a goal. And the one goal is the, a red circle and that's for calories. And everybody's like, well, how do I set that? And it's like, I don't know. I don't know your, your everyday uh, walking or running or exercising, but you need to come up with a goal that you think you can reach. Mm-hmm. Right. And then I always say, if you get, if you finish the day and you found that that was way too easy to reach, then up that goal. If you found right. it very difficult, then bring the goal down. And that's what I think like with pages or word counts, come up with something arbitrary at first because you're not going to know. Right. And, you know, you could say, all right, I'm going to do 2,000 words a day. And then if you try that and that's just way too much, bring it down. There's no harm in that. The, the trick is to find something that you can achieve every day. Yes. And I would say even if, if word count is too much, I would just use a time. Like, uh, I don't know if you know, like the Pomodoro method. That, that yes, doesn't work. That's what from, I'm using, actually. Oh, does that work for you? Because I find 20 minutes is too short. So mine is like I can do like an hour. I'm like, a little different. I, mm -hmm. I find an hour uh, very difficult. Okay. So it, it depends. So that's, a, it's an individual program. So let's explain that method. Mm -hmm. It is a good method. I just have to make it longer. Yeah. So you pick a time. So for me, it's usually like 15 minutes and then take a break for five minutes and then come back and do another 15 minutes. Take another break for five minutes or ha whatever your, your numbers are. Mm -hmm. I find that works very well for me. Yeah, so if I'm writing, one thing I always use is a, a timer, and I also go on YouTube, uh, the Yellow Brick Cinema YouTube site. It's all like ambient, uh, drone kind of music. It's yeah. it's it doesn't you know it doesn't have melody. It's just it's like a meditative Zen music. Okay. So I plug in and I choose the. I choose the three hour setting. Like if I'm going to do a serious writing session, I do three hours. I usually start very early in the morning, like six, even sometimes 5 a.m. And then I set the timer for an hour. And then after an hour, I take a break. And then I do a three hour session with like the breaks in between each hour. That works for me. That might be too much of a stretch for some people. But yeah, I, like I, I find the serious... pomage of the 20 minutes was just it just flew by. Right. I have serious ADHD. So like to me, it's very hard for me to sit and be in the zone for an hour mm -hmm. unless I'm doing something like uh, doodling or something, oh, okay. you know? Well, you, that would be interesting to just looking at your own, analyzing your own, uh, what works for you is like, when are you in the zone when the time does fly by? Are you drawing? That's, that's exercising a different part of the brain, Yeah, you know? Yeah, I can like... And, and I think that's an episode we can absolutely tackle is, is flow and yes. flow state. Yes. Uh, but yeah. I think that what we're talking about, the habit of mm -hmm. reasonable goals, the goal could be pages, it could be words, or as Regina just said, it could be hours. So some authors will say, I, I start at six. And I, I want to bring this up because I'm not a morning person. So G Regina waking up at 5 a.m. to write, that's not me. So don't feel like you have to be a morning no. person. You could be a night person. <laughs> it depends on, on when you feel. I want to be that person so badly. I want to be able to uh, wake up at five and have that time. I just can't. But see, I'm dead at night. I can't work at night. I can barely fun like speak. <laughs> 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 I'm asleep by nine o'clock. Oh, wow. So um, I it's interesting that. If you really want to do this, you got to look at it as a job. And like, mm -hmm. so you can't just like for a day job, unless you want to get fired, just like, I'll oh, get up and I'll do an hour of work and then I'll go out and have fun. Like if you want this to be a job and I, I want to bring this up because I, on my, one of my podcasts, I will be interviewing Grady Hendricks in June. Awesome. And 
him and I have gone back and forth on getting a time that works for the interview. And the one I thought I had it nailed down, he's like, oh, and here's the actual email. He says, hey, James, unfortunately, I work until 5 p.m., so it would have to be after that. So that is exactly how a professional writer looks at it, mm. right? It's not like, ah, uh, whatever. Like, And I know a lot of professional writers are like, between 11 and 5, I am on the clock. Yep. And they treat it as if it's a real, well, it is for them a real job, you know? Yeah. And, and, he's, think, and he's written a lot of books. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that the problem is people think, well, I'll be like that when I start getting making money. No. That's how you make money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully. But you need to produce. Uh, I mean, I, I think, I mean, some people can write a book a year. That's, that's actually not a, a bad goal. Yeah. Uh, like, I mean, I went for a year where I put, I pr published something last year. I guess it was 2022. Some, this is all the stuff I did during COVID. I published something a month. It was a book, a, an anthology, a short story. And that was a lot, but that was again, a personal challenge. And then this year I've been kind of just working on this and that, but I think reasonable goals is, is a good place to start and to see where your mark is, you know, like, um, what is it? Don't, don't ski over your skis or whatever. <laughs> what is that? I've never I, I heard that. I shouldn't use that expression because I don't really know what it is, but it's something like that. I, uh, I kind of think I understand what you mean. Yeah. Like, like don't shit where you eat. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Like don't, don't try to do too much and get discouraged. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I didn't get that at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh no ski over your blades i don't know there's an exp now i've oh, like, got to yeah. know what that is but like don't um don't try to do too much because you might think oh i can't do it but then don't try to not do enough like don't sit there and say for 10 minutes yeah and you don't get anything done well that's just not enough time perhaps but it's better than nothing one thing i learned from following the have these reasonable goals mm -hmm. is that you'll be surprised how quickly the words pile up. If yep. you have even a small, like an hour a day and you write for that hour, you'll be surprised. Like after a couple of weeks, you'll be like, Holy crap, look how much I've written. Yeah. So, oh, well, they also have these things. I don't know if you've ever done though. I, I have, and it's actually kind of fun. A uh, writer writing sprints. Yes an author tube, like you do it with friends. Like I've done, not that I've gotten a lot written, but it is definitely fun. It kind of, uh, changes things up, makes it a little more social. I'm somebody who doesn't like, I have to have absolute quiet when I write an absolute focus. Like I can't write in a coffee shop with a laptop, but I think you've done that. Haven't you? I have. Yes. See, I can't, it's too distracting. So, I, but some people, they, they get stimulated that way and they, they like that. So it's important with your reasonable goals to, to, uh, do what's like, it's what's right for you is a, is not going to be right for someone else, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. I think when I'm in public and it is difficult, but normally I have all these people to look at and maybe pick up a trait or a certain gesture or maybe some kind of outfit, and I can use that in my writing. So mm. that's the only reason I would be out in public is to grab some. And and I've done that, but I also do just... Don't get too creepy about it, that's all. No, I, I don't <laughs> think any... Kidding. I think all writers, and if you're observant or creepy, I just don't think there's any way around that. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. I do I people watch too, but I'm yeah. like, okay. And I normally, if I'm out writing in public, it's... Um, taking those things in and maybe mm -hmm. just making list or something like that. Um, but when it comes to reasonable goals, I think you can learn one, what is your like threshold and what you can handle Two, you will also learn if you like this uh, as a career, because sitting down once in a while, writing something and then saying you want to be a writer um, you you can write something and you are a writer. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a professional writer and make something, you got to treat it like a job and you might not find that fun. There's right. a lot of things about that. Any kind, and you know, you and I, Regina, have 
a lot of different areas in the arts that we participate in. True. And some of them are fun as hobbies, but I wouldn't want to do them for, as work. Yes, I know what you mean. Yeah. And so I think that's something that people, if they think they want to be a writer, it's it might be seeing the glamorous part. Oh, yeah. Insane. I mean, you, you have to, like, enjoy being alone. Yes. You know, take delight in your own company and in your own thoughts and fantasies. See, that's when, like, especially with when I find myself in that zone and, and like, I'm deep in it. You know, that's really, that's really great. But, again, the reasonable goal part, I think, is, like what you said, if you write a short story. What did you say? A short story a day, you're going to come up with, uh, you can't come up with 365 bad, oh, no, 52 bad. Oh, yes. It's short not, story well, a week. Ray Bradbury. It's not me. But oh, yes. it's not you. Okay. A short story a week. A short, I was going to say a day is a little much. But, yeah, <laughs> starting with short stories, I think, is an excellent way to set reasonable goals, like, like you have a week to finish, and this is maybe I'll do this a week to finish my, my. I'll start a short story and just see, and I'll do it, finish it in a week. There's a sense of accomplishment. You've made a goal, and it's not too much. It's not like I'm going to write Lord of the Rings Part Two, you know, here, uh, and it's that's just like oh, it's overwhelming. Yeah, and you could even break that down if you have a short story. You can even say I'm just going to work on the first scene today, or. And you- the first yeah. sentence, because that's super important. But, you know, the point is to just sit down, have a goal, and achieve that goal. Yeah, I don't know. Do you know Heinlein's rules? What are they? Okay, let me pull them up. Give me a sec. So this is what his five rules are. And this is all about goal setting, or it could be a separate podcast. But uh, his five rules are, you must write. You must finish what you start. You must refrain from rewriting except to editorial order. That's an interesting one. You must put it on the market. You must keep it on the market until it is sold. So those are the five rules. And of course, he was writing at a time where you would, you know, there was no self-publishing, but Yeah. But I a think lot of that still applies. A lot of it still applies, and I think the especially the first two, you must write and you must finish what you write. Yeah. It's something I try to do because I have some unfinished things hanging over my head. <laughs> I think yeah, every writer I mean, does. I have a ton of unfinished things, and I think that is one of my struggles. Um, but I think we got that covered. And yeah. uh, next week, we will do another habit. Okay, sounds good. All right. I'm getting inspired. We will be back next week with a new episode, Making Writing a Pleasure. Sometimes it's very difficult. How can we take steps to make it pleasurable? Hit that subscribe button and you won't miss a thing. Also, go to the show notes. Go buy a bookworm zine at Etsy. Learn what we're looking for. Until next week, keep writing. Bookworms is a Gorilla Delphia production. Yeah!